Welcome to the Book Party Podcast. Join us as we journey into the world of books with Michael T. Prepare to be captivated by engaging interviews, insightful discussions, and fascinating stories. You'll discover new adventures and gain insight into the creative process of the authors themselves as they share their struggles and accomplishments. Now let's hear from Michael T. This is Michael T. Welcome, dear listeners, and another exciting episode of the Book Party Podcast. Today, we're diving into a whimsical world of imagination and mischief with a fantastic author. Get ready to embark on an adventure as we introduce you to Lauren Watson and her enchanting book, The Lolly Shop Adventures with Bax and Ethan. But first, Let's get to know the creative genius behind this magical tale. Lauren Hackney, a resident of picturesque seaside suburb of Bisbane, Australia, is not just an author. She's an explorer, a traveler, a laughter enthusiast, and an outdoor aficionado. Her passion for storytelling, be it bedtime stories, campfire tales, or road trip adventures, knows no bounds. Lauren infuses these passions into her work and shares them with the world in the most creative ways. Lauren's mission is to help children flex their imagination muscles, encouraging them to craft their own stories, read voraciously, create endless, imagine boundlessly, and laugh aloud. She says, it doesn't matter how old you are, imagination can save the day. Now let's focus on her debut book, The Lolly Shop Adventures. This delightful tale is the opening chapter of an exciting series tailor-made for young readers aged 7 to 10, and for those cherished moments when parents or guardians read to their children at night in this enchanting story we meet two young boys, Baxter and Ethan, who are proud owners of a lolly shop nestled in a quiet Brisbane suburb. But hold on to your sweet tooth because things take a magical twist when a mysterious powder appears, accidentally mixes in with their delectable candies. A roller coaster of fun and silliness follows as these candies unleash havoc on the local community. As the story unfolds, Baxter and Ethan discover that the magic candy they're inadvertently created is both used for both mischievous and heartwarming purposes by the local children. Hilarity ensues, consequences must be dealt with, and amidst it all, these two lovable characters develop a deeper understanding of each other's personalities. Together they embark on a journey to find a resolution where both adults and children could coexist with this magical newfound, and as if that is not enough, future books in the series promise to delve even further into the fantastical world from which this magical powder originates, introducing us to a host of whimsical characters. So, dear listeners, are you ready to join us on the extraordinary adventure? Lauren Watson's The Lolly Shop Adventures with Bax and Ethan promises laughter, imagination, and a magic sprinkle that will enchant you. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the world of this incredible book and explore the boundless creativity of Lauren Watson. It's going to be a lolly of a good time. So, Lauren, why don't you take it from here, fill in some of the blanks a bit, and tell our listeners about yourself. Yes, happily. So, thank you so much, Michael. That was a beautiful and amazing introduction. I don't know how I can top that. Thank you very much. Um, good morning from Brisbane, Australia. Yes, I love to create bedtime stories with my children. And that book that you just described is exactly what we came up with. When the boys were two and four, we would snuggle in bed together and think of 
our bedtime tales. It just so happened that the lolly shop bedtime tale was the most popular for us. We created lots of other little stories here and there, but the lolly shop grew and grew and grew and became so exciting that with every camping trip and every road trip, bits and pieces to the story would be added. So yes, that that is a little bit about how it came about and how my children and I, who are now nine and eleven over many many years, um, developed the story with me. It was a bedtime tale. Well, on your publishing journey, mm-hmm. did you go the self-publishing route or the route of finding an agent and an agency route, or something in between, like a hybrid publisher? How did you do your publishing journey? Yes. Okay. So we, when we decided to actually write this manuscript, it was because I had um, lost my job uh, with the pandemic. So I was in aviation and I thought nothing of our bedtime tale until I went camping with friends and we told them the, camp time ta- uh, the bedtime story at bedtime and it was so popular that every night children loved it. And so when I lost my job with the pandemic, my girlfriend said, you know, you could use this time to write this story. And I did. And when I was writing it, I had I would send my drafts off to my friends and drafts off to some of the work people I would work with. And a lot of them said, oh, it's so much fun. It's a page turner. It's full of magic and mischief. And, you know, we twists and turns that I just assumed extremely ignorantly. <laughs> that I would send it to a publisher and publishers would take it on. Well, no one did. <laughs> no one in Australia took it on at the time. Um, so after after realising, oh, wow, there's more hurdles than what I thought, um, I tried getting an agent, of course, and nothing was working out. Um, my neighbour introduced me to um, a retired editor who worked in publishing and she helped me self-publish it. And she was very specific when she said, I'm retired. I don't want to get back into the game. So please don't, please don't make it out that, you know, I'm, I'm open for business again. I'm, I'm just going to help you get this story out because I love your story. And she was with me for the first three books. Um, so, yes, I, I will say I did the self-publishing round. But I had some very good professional help. <laughs> <laughs> so did you did you do a lot of uh, collaboration, like the editing, formatting, the book cover, or did you go the indie route and pretty much do that stuff yourself? Pretty much did that stuff myself. So the editor I worked with um, did navigate me on. Uh, covers and formatting and um, in the layouts, she, she really did help me um, through Ingram Spark and through Amazon Kindle self publishing. I think they call it KDP. Um, she she was very you know uh, knowledgeable on fonts and spacing, but when it came to illustrations and characters and and drawing all that, my boys and I used my pandemic downtime to sit at the dining room table and draw and, and draw the characters and, and think of a cover and and think of what the characters would look like. So so we we did all that ourselves. So the editor who helped us self publish, she then helped us for, um create the absolute end product as well. She was there every step of the way. Oh, that's fantastic. So even though this was in the t- pandemic time, take us to what you would consider in in writing this book as your worst author moment. Oh, I love this question. As soon as I I, I knew this question was coming, I couldn't wait to tell you. Um, it's actually to do with um, and I don't know how to word this in a, in a way, but I'm just going to talk. Um. It's actually with my worst author experience would be when people love to judge a book by its cover. So I had my boys, um, and because my boys grew up with this story, again, we started this when they were 
toddlers in bed of a night. That's, that's how I put them to sleep. And it, years and years and years passed. And when they were six and eight, that's when we first started this story. So we've grown up with it. It is part of us as a family. When we actually got our first book in our hands, hardcover, we were so proud that I approached the boys' teachers at the local school. And of course, the teachers of Baxter and Heathen were extremely eager to see what we had produced. And we went into the classrooms and we read parts of the book and we showed the books to the classrooms. I then had other teachers want me to visit their classes as well. But the worst of the moment was when one of the teachers gave me gave me feedback from parents saying we don't we don't want you to bring this book back because parents are coming back with feedback their kids are going home telling them about this lolly book and they think it's all about encouraging lolly consumption they're worried their kids are going to eat more sugar um they they honestly they they were judging right based on the look of the book and the title and as an author, being the worst author moment, I understand because as a parent, you want to censor what your children read. And some parents, you know, or guardians want their kids to read a book where there's a message or there's, you know, a lesson learned. But to take, but to take a book away altogether and not even give it an opportunity when there's so many other aspects, positive aspects to this story was would definitely be my worst author moment because it was really heartbreaking that I had local parents automatically not be interested in the book simply because of the title and and what they thought the book would be about. Oh, that's terrible. It would be a heartbreaking moment for sure though. So let's let's flip the coin a little bit. When you were writing this book and well let's let's put it this way. When you were doing anything but actually writing this book, mm -hmm. during the time, though, it could have been driving, it could have been cooking, could have been doing anything. And I call it having an epiphany moment, that all of a sudden, this bright light would go off in your head, this idea would come that, oh, I've got to write this down right now, that's got to be in my book. Did you ever have a moment like that? Yes, I was at the dentist with my mouth open. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I remember having a dental check with my boys in the chair, and I remember not being able to move. I was get, I was in my dentist chair with my mouth open, looking up, and remembering part of a part of our story that I forgot to write down. And I really got frustrated at myself because I had to rely on my overtired. 40 year old brain hoping that I can remember when I got home to write this piece in the story. So my my moments where I really have to go, okay, dentist chair moments, shopping and scanning grocery moments at the store where you really can't just drop everything and write something down. Those moments come to me a lot. They come to me at the worst times. So I really have to pray that my memory kicks in. Yeah. Sometimes they can come at some pretty odd times. I know that there was one there was one lady I interviewed and she happened to be at a camp where the cabins were in one place, the showers were in another place, and she had her towel and it's probably I don't know, twenty five, thirty yards away. And she had her towel and her phone and, and her soap of course and whatnot. And she had this idea that hit her while she was in the shower. And she grabbed her towel and started running. And as she was running to write this down, her towel came off and she kept <laughs> running. And all these people are looking at this crazy woman that's just running with this towel hanging, you know, <laughs> just running to her cabin and this towel is hanging. She's got her phone in her hand, just running, running, running. And she's thinking, man, these they must think I'm just crazy. And she had to get this written because if you don't get it written down now, it's going to fade away and not be the same thing as it was when you thought of it, you know. 
And that was a heck of a story that she told. And this is the first time I've brought that up since then. (laughs) Oh, she's not listening. I won't say her name. (laughs) Okay. So today, what is the one thing that you're most fired up about or excited about right now today? I have the opportunity to talk to people like yourself about my journey. And I'm fired up because, yes, my, my book success is quite minimal. I, I am quite small in the author world. But I love to tell people that you can, you can honestly do anything. Because I started this book, well, I just I started telling stories with my kids. Every parent does that. That is not unusual. But I lost my job during the pandemic, and I, I was working in a job that didn't even make me half of the money that I was usually earning. And I used that time to focus on doing something special with my kids, and it saved the day. This is what I'm. This is what I'm trying to, I guess, say to everyone listening to my story: is imagination and the fact that I did something different with my children during a very hard time, it saved us. I look back now and go, you know what? I've created this story with kids that local kids around our area absolutely love, adore. I love talking to them about what they would do if they had magic, what they would do if they could fly, what they could do if they could walk through walls, what they could do if they could float to school in a bubble when it's pouring rain. There's so many magical taught parts to the story. They get to talk to people about that. That is so amazing. And considering it came out of a time that honestly was so heartbreaking for me because I didn't want to lose my job. Do you know what I mean? So I'm fired up because I get to tell people that if you've had a crappy situation in your life, something else can come out of it for sure. Yeah, well, we've had a number of of, uh, authors that I've spoken with that the pandemic was a time that they started writing their first book for a number of different reasons um, Mm -hmm. and different genres and whatnot. But the pandemic was a time that they took advantage of to just start writing their book and uh, tell their story, whatever that story might have been. And that kind of saved the day for them because it made their, their mind work and, you know, gave them something to think about and something to do rather than just sit there, you know, basically at home with nowhere to go and nothing to do, no work to be done. They're losing their jobs. And that was a, a you know, a, a save the day kind of situation was to start writing. So, mm-hmm. you know, that was a blessing in disguise for a lot of these people. Yeah, so and imagination. This is, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go I was ahead. just going to say, and it- and imagination just isn't for kids. If you let yourself as an adult, let your imagination run wild, it can, it can absolutely change your life. And I, I praise these people for doing that, finding something when times were so incredibly tough to let their imaginations run wild. Because as an adult, it's so easy for them not to because you're so distracted by life. Right. Well, this is Michael T. I invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com, hit that subscribe tab on top, scroll down to the icon of your choice, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey. You can download and follow us there. Please leave a review. Please don't forget to sign up for our weekly video newsletter and get the latest information on our upcoming shows. Okay, Lauren, we're entering the lightning round, and that's called that because it's four pointed questions for four pointed answers, okay? All right, let's do it. Before you started writing, before you became an author, what held you back from becoming an author in the first place? I didn't think I belonged in that community. Honestly, I didn't think I was good enough to be an author. Didn't think you were good enough. Why? Because I'm surrounded by so many talented ones. Um, no, there's so many great authors in my local community who who have so many amazing selling books and they're doing the uh, book circuit right around Australia and they travel a lot. And 
I didn't I didn't think I I didn't think I belonged there because I didn't think I was ever going to be at that level. Well, there's a lot of authors that don't think they belong there because how can I compete with them? How can you know there's these authors with all these books and novels and you know, how can I compete with that? When you realize you're writing from you and your heart and your soul and your mind to your own avatar, you're not competing with them. Your only competition is yourself. And once you realize that, you belong in your own little community, don't you? So you just start and, writing yeah. and you're only competing with you. And that's what you need to know. Okay, yeah. so once you started writing, you're in contact with a few people. What was the best advice that you had received? The best advice I received was you are the average of your closest seven people. And that made me really reflect because that's true. My, my closest seven people were the ones driving me to write this book when I didn't think it was that special because my first words to all my friends after we went camping that one particular time was, yeah, but every parent does this. Every parent tells kids stories to their children. But my friends were saying, not like this. You need to tell this story. So the best advice I received was you are the average of your closest seven friends, and I'm so grateful for the ones I have. That's fantastic. I'll tell you, if you're going to keep writing, one of the best pieces of advice that I've heard, because I interview a lot of authors, you cannot edit a blank page. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's you cannot so good. edit a blank page. So if you're going to write, get down there and write. Yep. And the other one is that I really enjoy is you write drunk, edit sober. <laughs> Just get it out of your head. Just write it. Don't worry about sentence structure and punctuation and all that stuff. Just get it out of your head and punch it down. Worry about that later. Write drunk, edit sober. So those are the two that I've liked the most that I've heard from people that I've talked to. And I've talked to a lot of authors. Okay. Share one of your habits that contributes to your success in your writing. Finding time. And I know every parent with small kids is busy. I work, I now work full-time in um, like a, a day role. I'm no longer a shift work. Um, I have two kids who do lots of sport activities. I have a shift working husband. Um, yeah, life is busy. But one thing that contributed to my success so far is finding the time. So I set my alarm and I get up at 4 or 4.30 or in the morning and that's my time to work on it. So that's contrib That's what I find has contributed is you just find the time to do it. There you go. Okay, share an internet resource with our listeners that you use when you write. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it. YouTube. I'm sorry. As much as there's rubbish content on there, there's some good stuff too. And I'm learning more about, um, you know, plot development and character development and story arcs because prior to prior to the pandemic, writing and being an author was not on my radar. Um, I really only, I really only started because I wanted to publish my child, my children's bedtime story. So that's. That's one of the platforms I use. I won't be sorry to say it. A lot of people use that same platform. Trust me. Mm. Okay, Lauren, we are now going to enter into the grand finale. What this is, is I want you to take the time to tell our listeners all about your book. Oh, I'm so excited to tell you all about our book. Now, imagine if you could go into a lolly shop. And all the lollies that are for sale have different powers. And the best part is, it's temporary magic. So temporary magic. One day, you can fly. One day, you can walk through walls. One day, you can float in a, in a bubble. One day, you can teleport. The next day, you can swim under the water with turtles. The next day, you can 
uh, play with magical real life gummy bears that you can dance with and play with. Now imagine Lolly Shop in your community. Now imagine who's going to be having that magic and who's going to be using it for mischief and who's going to be using it to help each other. But then where does the magic come from? Well, you're going to have to read book two because book two explains how the magic got to the lolly shop, why the magic got to the lolly shop, and how Baxter and Ethan can help this magical world with their collaborative and their working together, how they can actually help this flip world with their problems as well. So if you like a twisty tale, if you like to laugh, and if you like to get lost in a magical story, the lolly shop is for you. It sounds like a fantastic book. <laughs> well, my children, so can I just tell you really quickly where one part of the story comes from? Sure. So we live in Brisbane, Australia, where it's hot in the summer and it's sticky, the humidity is sticky. It's really only good if you're going to go to the beach, really. Um, but my boy said, hey, mum, wouldn't it be good if the lolly shop could make us have a snow day in the middle of summer? And if you read our story, you'll find out that's exactly what happens. Brisbane gets its first white Christmas thanks to the lolly shop. Okay, good. Well, Lauren, we thank you so much for being here with us today, opening up to us, and I'm sure our listeners appreciate this too. And to our listeners, the Lolly Shop with Bax and, and Ethan is available on Amazon. So again, this is Michael T. To all our listeners, I would invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com, hit that subscribe tab on top, and scroll down to the icon of your choice where you can find us on your favorite platform, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey. You can download and follow us there, and please leave a review. Don't forget to sign up for our weekly video newsletter and get the latest information on our upcoming show. Until next time, keep reading, learning, and discovering the world through the pages of a good book. Book Party Podcast is owned and powered by MTM Legacy Publishing, LLC. This is Michael T. and signing off. You must not miss our next episode as we delve into a world of inspiration, entertainment, and thought-provoking insights. Join Michael T. on the next Book Party Podcast and experience a new adventure, a new story, and a complete immersion into the world of Pages Unveiled, Chronicles of the Writing Journey.